guys, welcome back to the channel. This is Pink Lady Gamer, and today we are going to talk about my favorite top 10 Disney villains. I know, I, I was like, it's been a while since I did a top 10, but um, so yeah, I was like, well, I can't if I did my prince and my princesses, why don't why would leave out the villains? I mean, they make up the stories anyway, so. Let's get down to my top 10 favorite Disney villains. And on my list, on my top 10 list is, I gotta put them on here because it's for my favorite movie, so Gaston. Gaston, yeah, he's on a low totem pole because to me he really, I don't know, he's not really a villain per se, I guess. He's more like, people take it wrong on him about him, he was just he was just a very narcissistic type person. He thought he was beautiful. He had to get everybody thought he was beautiful. And just didn't know the word no. That was the probably the best thing. That's probably what made him bad is because he didn't know the word no. So, yeah. All around, he just, <laughs> he wasn't that villainy. But I had to put him on here because he came from my favorite movie. And I have to at least include him somewhere. So, yeah, there's not much to say about him. Just basically, he's just, he was the type of person that probably got his way. Probably the most of the time. Because he never know the word no. Because that's why he got all ticked off. He was trying to get Belle's approval of everything. So, yeah. Anyways. Alright, next on the list, number nine, is, oh, who was it again? I have to remember myself, guys. Number nine, um... Let's see, I would have to put, um, oh, good God, number nine, it's going to be a hard one, because there's so many good villains out there, um, I'll have to say Judge Frollo from Hunchback of Notre Dame, yeah, he was a cool villain, I mean, he was a villain villain, but he just wanted power, I guess? And he just didn't know how to do it, I guess. C give or take. And he was very manipulative. And he was very racist. Yeah, he was racist. Probably nobody really realizes, but how race uh, his character was a really a racist character. I mean, it's a Disney movie, but in general sense, he was racist towards the gypsies. So I could see him. He has to at least be kind of both guest on to where he'll be, you know, but he's still kind of low because it wasn't really, it's like typical things, I guess, but not like nothing too extravagant that makes it so like wonderful and everything like that. But, um, so yeah, that's why he's on the list and that's why he's not the, top, the, on uh, top of it. So yeah, he's just, just wanted power basically. And I think at that time, it still was doing the King and Queen stuff, I think. I'm not for sure. Don't quote me on it. It was around the French Revolution, I think it was. But anyways, number eight on the list has to go to Ursula from The Little Mermaid. Um, she, she was a really good villain. I mean, she did a lot of magic. She was manipulative. Because, I mean, she got Ariel to sign the contract and everything like that. And, um, you know, and she could... And she could do, like, the transformation stuff, too. Because of, like, you know, she transferred herself into Vanessa. And she manipulated, kind of, um, using her magic to get um, Prince Eric, you know, to fall in love with her. Tried to ruin everything. So, because, you know, she's all... Ariel was so ahead of the time of what she thought maybe she wouldn't, couldn't survive. But she did. But got kind of... a jealous, whatever. I don't know. She just, another one that wanted a crown. Most of these villains just wanted power. But who knew who, how they would be power, but we never know because they would last for like maybe a few minutes and it's like gone. So, but yeah, most of these, most of these um, villains just wanted power. That's all they wanted. They just wanted that kingdom. Or more or less, just not the power, but the recognition of what they did or Whatever, and some people just don't recognize it, I guess. I don't know. But Ursula, yeah. She had a good song, too. I think I like that song. <laughs> Probably one of my favorite Disney villain songs. But, 
Anyways, yeah, that's not much to say. I'm trying to think of her, like, what else she did. But yeah, she was mostly manipulative and wanted power and used magic. Eh, your basic, almost your basic villain. But anyways, guys, let's go next to number seven, which I put as the evil queen from Snow White and the Seven Doors. I liked her because of, like, she did another transformation, but she still, you know, she put the power thing over herself. And she really, you know made Snow White kind of suffer in some way, but not really, like, suffer, suffer, I guess. Because she made her, like, you know, be a maid and everything. But, um, but she knew how to use magic, too, and transform herself into a lady. But, you know, the funny thing is, out of that whole entire movie, I just realized, as an adult, never realized as a kid, but you know what? She died ugly. She died ugly at the end of the movie. Probably people don't realize that, but ugly prevails sometimes, not just the beauty. Beauty is within, not on the outside she never really and and somebody mentioned to me which was my brother mentioned to me it's like you know what she's probably the only villain that had no flowing hair when she had when she was in her evil queen look her hair was never out of place i give her props for that <laughs> and she also had a magic mirror who would want a magic mirror i don't know if i would or not but if any of you guys want to let me know down in the comments if you wanted a magic mirror but I don't know if I really want to know what's going on in the world or other people. So <laughs> kind of keep to myself about that. I don't need to know about other people's trauma. <laughs> but anyways, guys, next on the list on number six is going to have to be Jafar from Aladdin. Yes, he did manipulation too with his little... And I thought it was kind of cool, the hypnotizing with his little snake staff thing, whatever. I thought that was kind of cool. It's kind of kind of ironic, and he became powerful, powerful too. But he is the genie. But he got the worst of the deal as being a villain because he wanted the most power in the world, and he has the whole gist of himself. He became a genie, and then he got himself screwed over because uh, genie, you get when you're a genie, you until somebody sets you free, you are pretty much in the hands of whatever. So. It was so much fun to watch that happen and him becoming a snake. Snake was a big thing of his. He's a slithering snake. <laughs> but anyways, but yeah, and his little sidekick Iago was a really good, good add to that too. But it was just funny. But anyways, guys, on to number five. Now we're getting to the top five. Um, we'll have to go to um, Dr. Felicier. I think that's how you say his name, something like that, or the voodoo doctor. Yeah, another person that won power, but I liked his because he was like a little more of a dark forces using shadows and stuff. I guess that's what they call him, the shadow man. And he transformed Prince Naveen into a frog, so he, he knew how to use some sort of magic of, tr well, not really him. I don't think it was the people, his friends on the other side. Um, gave him a little thing to let the prince become a frog, which I think was really kind of funny. It's like, really? Frog? Couldn't pick any other animal down in New Orleans to become besides a frog, but, but I thought it was really cool, and he wanted power too, but he was manipulative too on, on some fronts too. I mean, he manipulated, um, what's his name? I don't remember his name. Well, Naveen's little personal, whoever that was. I, Nigel? I think it's Nigel. I don't know. Don't, don't know if you don't quote me because I don't. I haven't seen that movie for a while, so I can't quote it. It's not. I mean, it's one of my favorite movies, but it's not favorite favorite. Where I could tell you all about the movie and probably dialogue with it, but but anyways, but yeah, I kind of like that and how the shadow stuff went to be. And his song was awesome too. I kind of liked his songs. His friends on the other side song. That was really cool. The song, but. Yeah, not much to say. This is very hard. You know what's that, guys? Like, to explain a villain is very hard. But, yep. Anyways, guys, on number four on my list, I'll have to go to... Oh, good God, guys. I have to go through all my freaking villains. I'll have to say Maleficent. Yeah, guys, I know she's very low on the top, like, low, but to me, yeah, she was a very, she's like the number one villain that everybody puts her with, but to me with her is that, um, she just wanted power, she had magic, she was a evil fairy to some people, 
And, you know, and she was just misunderstood, basically. She was a misunderstood character. Like, she just wanted to be invited. If you, if you realize in the first, like, in the original cartoon version, I'm not talking about the Maleficent movie itself, but just in the general sense, if you think about it, all she wanted to was to be invited. And nobody decided, oh, let's invite Maleficent. Everybody just kind of, like, left her out in the dust. So I can see, understand that she was really ticked off in what she did and what and stuff is because it's like, come on, guys. I wanted to be invited too. Why, you know, outcast me? What, what's wrong with me to be outcasted? So I could see where she was coming from. So basically, she just wanted to be part of everything. She didn't, you know, I mean, she didn't really want power, really. She didn't want power at all. She just wanted to be included, I guess. So basically, I give her props that she was a misunderstood character and a misunderstood person. So, you know, I do feel sorry for Maleficent. And you know what? And it's always cool to be turned into yourself into a dragon, too. I mean, who doesn't want to be a dragon? Those are like the coolest little mythological creatures that you can get. So, anyways, guys, number three on my list. We'll get back to, yeah, I didn't want to go too much for it. But number three is um, Oogie Boogie from The Nightmare Before Christmas. Yeah, guys, and a lot of people don't know about Oogie Boogie, but you gotta realize, guys, he is the nightmares of your worst nightmares. I mean, who cannot beat that? I mean, he is he is your darkest nightmare that you can ever find in yourself. So I give him the props for being that type of a villain, because, I mean, and just being in Halloween Town itself, and, you know, and kind of freaking out Santa Claus there. <laughs> I probably Santa Claus is probably like, yep, not going to Halloween Town anytime soon. But you gotta realize Oogie Boogie is like the worst villain of all. He's not the top one, but he is up there because of that. Because he is your worst nightmares ever. And I don't think I ever want him to be coming to my house and giving me my worst night nightmares. Excuse me, guys. But yeah. Don't think I can I don't think that can compete with anything of being your worst nightmares. But anyways guys, next on the list, number two on the list is Scar from The Lion King. I mean, come on guys. Scar, I mean that's like the best name ever. But just a little side note, guys. I think it's if I read correctly somewhere, I think it's like Swahili or something like that, but Scar means garbage in that language. So basically, Scar is garbage. <laughs> I found that somewhere and I thought it was hilarious when I found that out. So anyways, yeah. But um, but yeah, he was very manipulative and he wanted power too. But you know what? That was kind of a misunderstood. But like, cause like people pu pushed him aside. It's like once Mufasa became king and everything was the golden whatever, Scar got pushed aside. So I could see where he is coming from too. He's the misunderstood character. It's like he just wanted people to notice him, not just be like, oh, I'm just the brother of Mufasa, you know, and all that, and just be that second hand type person. See, I would think that would be a hard thing to consideration of, like especially if you're siblings old older and is becoming the most they're gonna be the next the next ruler and you're just like oh I'm just I'm here if the ruler doesn't have a kid or a son whatever or he dies you know anything like that it's just like he just misunderstood and yeah he manipulated Simba and stuff like that to get Mufasa killed even though Simba had nothing to do with it it was all Scar until that didn't get kind of situated until later on but anyways guys <laughs> drumroll please no not gonna happen <laughs> anyways number one on my top disney villain is hades from hercules now the reason why you know and people don't know about hades from hercules it, and stuff because hercules was not a very popular movie but the reason is guys that why hades is number one i know people will be like what why is he number one Think about it, guys. He's a god. He can never die. So he is the probably the top villain out of all the Disney villains so far. Is because he's a god. He cannot die. Even though he was a freaking douchebag in the whole movie, you know, try to, you know, kill Hercules and stuff like that. But in all realization, guys, he cannot die. He's a god. Gods can't die. Especially in, like, you know, your Greek mythology and stuff like that. 
So he has to be top one because you can try to kill him all you want to or try to hurt him all you want to, but he never really dies because he's the Lord. He's the God of the underworld. He has to live. There's no, unless there, it's yeah. You know, it's just the Greek mythology talking or whatever the Greek mythology thing that makes it sound. But really, guys, that's the reason why he's top number one because he cannot die. So that's my opinion. So don't take it out of context like this is true. But this is my opinion how I put the ranks of um, my top ten Disney villains are. I um, mean, if you don't like it, that's fine. That's your your opinion. It's just this is my opinion, just to clarify and everything like that. So. If you like it, cool. If you don't like it, cool. Everybody has an opinion about everything. So, anyways, guys, hope and like. Hope you like this video. Please and like and share this video. And if you want to make sure when I do post, please hit that bell down there to get more notifications for when I post. I post at least once a week. So, so, anyways, guys. Uh, yeah. Anyways, I'll see you guys. Just remember. You guys are all a book and still being written. So I'll see you guys all next time. Bye.